Hey there, history enthusiasts! Welcome back to another episode of Eccentric History, where we explore captivating and controversial moments from the past. Today, we have a juicy topic the secret diary of Mussolini's mistress. You likely know Benito Mussolini, the fascist dictator who ruled Italy for over two decades. But did you know he had a secret life? Mussolini's romance with his mistress, Clara Patassi, is a fascinating part of his life story. Claretta's diary gives us a unique, unfiltered look into the personal life of one of the 20th century's most notorious leaders. Are you ready to dive into the fascinating details from the pages of Mussolini's mistress's diary? Let's go! But before we begin, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content. Background Clara Patacci, also known as Claretta, was born in Rome to a prominent aristocratic family. Her father, Francesco Severio Patecci, served as a physician to the Holy Apostolic Palaces and had strong political ties to the fascist movement. It wasn't long before Clara adopted similar ideologies. Known for her beauty and charisma, she pursued acting in the early 1930s. Before her involvement with Mussolini, Clara was married to an Air Force officer, Riccardo Federici. Little is known about their relationship, but they separated in 1934 when Federici was assigned to Tokyo as an Air Force attache. Clara admired Mussolini, whom she called the Deuce, from her teenage years. Interestingly, despite his authoritarian rule, Mussolini attracted a group of young women who found him irresistible, and Clara Patati was among them. How they met now, let's discuss how the Juice and Clara Patacci met and formed a powerful bond. Different accounts give different perspectives on their first encounter. Some say they were friends who met through Clara's sister, an employee of Mussolini's fascist party. Others tell a more serendipitous story. In the chance encounter version, Patacci longed to meet Mussolini, and fate intervened when they found themselves on the same road one day. The meeting set the stage for their passionate, lasting bond. Upon recognizing Mussolini, Patacci told her driver to speed up and close the gap between their vehicles. She called out Mussolini's name until he finally noticed and stopped to meet her. Their connection was said to be love at first sight, and from there history was written. Despite their 28-year age difference and Mussolini's status as a married father of five, the two became deeply involved. Another account suggests that Mussolini pursued Patacci with persistence before she finally relented. Regardless of the exact circumstances, the pair remained devoted lovers until their eventual execution. Mussolini's Personal Life One aspect of Italian history that often remains hidden is Mussolini's romantic pursuits. While the world primarily remembers him as a ruthless fascist, Clara Patacci's detailed diary provides unique insights into the late dictator's personal life and interests. Her writings reveal not only Mussolini's political leanings, but also his deep affection for Patacci, shedding new light on this enigmatic historical figure. Now, let's talk about the private life of this notorious dictator, as revealed through Clara's accounts. In her writings, Clara openly shares intimate moments she shared with Mussolini. In one entry, she described their passion. I kiss him and his screams seem like those of a wounded beast. He bit my shoulder so hard, his teeth left a mark. At other times, the man known to the world as a ruthless dictator revealed a tender side to his mistress. In a letter addressed to Clara, Mussolini confided, I tremble in telling you, but I have a feverish desire to kiss you all over, and you must adore me, your giant. These instances offer a glimpse into the intensity of their relationship. Beyond these passionate exchanges, Clara's writings also provide insight into Mussolini's other romantic liaisons and political interests. Mussolini was known to receive a significant amount of fan mail from admirers, often instructing his staff to identify potential women for him to meet with. In 1938, he recounted instances of his leisure activities, describing how he had met with four different women in succession, from 8pm to 11pm. The Revelations Despite these extracurricular pursuits, Mussolini remained fiercely protective of Clara, which could be interpreted as insecurity. In her diary, Patacci reveals that the couple was prone to intense jealousy. On occasion, Mussolini's controlling nature surfaced, not just in public but also in their private life. He imposed numerous restrictions on Clara, limiting her freedom and confining her to their home. 
He assigned bodyguards to keep constant watch over her, particularly in public settings, and even enlisted his own mother to monitor Patachi to ensure no other man could approach her. The imposed isolation left Patachi with ample free time, which she utilized to maintain a detailed diary. In it, she chronicled her daily interactions with the dictator, leisurely strolls in the park, and various other experiences ultimately spanning over 2,000 pages of her life with Mussolini. Patachi's diary also sheds light on a fascinating episode involving rumors of Mussolini's association with Princess Maria Jose of Belgium. Patachi documented the princess's infatuation with the dictator and her attempts to seduce him and capture his attention. In one instance, the princess reportedly wore provocative attire to alarm Mussolini. In another, she facilitated communication between her father, the King of Belgium, and Mussolini. Despite speculations surrounding their romantic involvement, no substantial evidence emerged to confirm a relationship between Maria Jose and Mussolini. Now, let's explore the revelations concerning the late dictator's political beliefs. While Mussolini's ruthlessness is well documented, his anti-Semitic views did not become widely known until the latter part of his career and life. Historians assert that certain excerpts from Patachi's diary reinforce Mussolini's image as an anti-Semite. At one point, he was quoted saying, I was racist since 1921. The diary provides further evidence of Mussolini's anti-Semitic tendencies, such as an incident after meeting with Hitler in 1938. While visiting the beach, he reportedly told Patachi, these disgusting Jews, I must destroy them all. It is a tragic historical coincidence that both Mussolini and Hitler, two fascists with shared racist ideologies, rose to power around the same time and orchestrated mass executions based on race. In another account by Patachi, Mussolini spoke affectionately of Hitler, stating, Hitler is a big softy deep down. This occurred in 1938 when the two infamous dictators first met. Mussolini also confided in Clara about their emotional encounter, mentioning that both leaders were moved to tears and that Hitler held him in high regard. More details Historians were undoubtedly intrigued by the discovery of Clara's diary, but there are certain debates surrounding the text and its interpretation. Some argue that Patachi had little to no interest in politics, suggesting that her accounts of Mussolini's political affairs should be approached with caution and not taken at face value. It's also unclear whether Mussolini was entirely truthful with her about his political maneuvers, leading some to question the authenticity of his statements. While the full extent of the truth may remain elusive, Clara's diary has undeniably served as a valuable resource for gaining insight into the private life of an individual known to the world as a ruthless dictator. Mussolini and Claretta shared an intense bond, ultimately meeting their end together. As Italian partisans sought to execute Mussolini, he attempted to flee Germany with Hitler's assistance. However, the partisans intercepted the German truck carrying the fascist leader and discovered Clara in a separate vehicle. She had insisted on accompanying Mussolini throughout these tumultuous times. According to some accounts, the partisans offered Clara a chance to leave unharmed, urging her never to look back, yet out of unwavering devotion to Mussolini, she chose to stay by his side. In this story, one cannot overlook the profound devotion between Mussolini and Patachi, evident in the fact that the mistress ultimately died in the dictator's arms. Although Patachi's written accounts provide a more humanized perspective of the fascist leader, they cannot erase the reality that he propagated a system of racism and hatred. Mussolini was not a good man, and while her diary allows us to better understand him and view history through a different lens, it does not absolve him of the genocide he committed or his role in paving the way for Hitler's fascist rule. Regarding Patachi's diary, she entrusted it to Rena Davis, a countess for safekeeping. Five years after Patachi's execution, the police discovered the diaries buried in the countess's garden. Following the discovery, the diaries were quietly stored in the National Archives and only made public in recent years. To this day, only select excerpts from her diary have been released to the public. And that's a wrap, folks. We can't wait to share more captivating and thought-provoking stories with you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for more exciting content. Catch you next time.